So there are a whole variety of theories of religion that one might offer, you know, as an answer to the question, what is religion? Um, there have been several videos made recently. Uh, Professor Anton suggested that religion has to do with um, uh, the space of language and uh, the way in which human organisms enter into social relationships with others through the medium of, of language or uh, symbol um, and that once that we've entered into this uh, sort of a community or media ecology we are no longer able to determine uh, finally who we are who, who I can't know who I am independently of um, my not only understanding of, of of language, but um, my relationship to other language users and, and other organisms immersed in this world of, um, of language. So human beings as cultural entities become sort of, our existence is, is fissured. Uh, there's sort of a gap that lives at the heart of our existence um, that prevents us from being able to finally resolve the difference between myself and an other and that religion emerges as I try to come into relationship to not just any other particular uh, person but to person personality in general to being as such how do I come to have a relationship with being with the fact that you know if I am then there must be first, before I could then be as a consequence. Um, and so as, as language users, as cultural beings, humans, human consciousness exists in relationship to its own ground and wants to know its own ground. Uh, and I think, you know, there's something deeply insightful about what Corey is talking about. Another video was made by uh, Anna Kantavad, who I think was... Well, he was, he was trying to say that religion is sort of invention by a group of individuals, rich and powerful individuals at some point in, you know, in the past, uh, who wanted to justify uh, their own position at the top of a social hierarchy to the majority of the people who were below them, uh, poor people. And so they invented religion as a way of brainwashing the masses into accepting their lowly position on the social hierarchy. Uh, and I think, you know, what Anna Kantavad here is really talking about is ideology. And that, you know, once human society complexified to the point that uh, state bureaucracies um, and economic hierarchies had emerged, then yeah, religion at that point degenerates into ideology. And you get eventually what we have today, a sort of uh, corporatocracy ruled by the religion of consumerism, where, um, uh, you know, our... Our, we, we pray to our televisions, uh, we hold mass in movie theaters, and uh, we, we live and breathe our religion in the mass media. Um, the advertising industry manufactures our desires for us uh, with this faux religion invented by corporate elites, right? So in this day and age, yeah, religion has passed through a series of deformations uh, and, and become ideology. And in this context, it's not just consumer capitalism that is a sort of faux religion or ideology. You know, we have others, Marxism, positivism, um, you know, creationism. And these all sort of coexist today uh, in competition with one another. And the, the problem here, I think, is that we've lost sight of, we've forgotten the origin of religion. And so we really need to penetrate deeply into history, human history, to grasp the origin of religion. We can't just go back to when the four, first states were forming, because that's not when religion began, right? Whatever the human being is, it seems that uh, part of our cultural existence, part of our existence as symbolic creatures is, is, is to be religious. So the human, you know, we are really, um, you know, a religious species. It's sort of what defines us in our essence. It's that we need to be in relation with our own ground, with our own source. Um, 
other animals don't seem as uh, hell-bent on having and maintaining such a, a relation. So the human being is the religious animal and I think originally this religiosity emerged as in the form of myth, right? And no myth wasn't invented by uh, elites in order to justify their place on the, on the social hierarchy because human society for most of its existence, probably 180,000, 190,000 years at least, was far more egalitarian. You know, hunter-gatherer societies didn't have stockpiles of uh, food and, and livestock um, to protect uh, and maintain. And so maybe there was a diversification of labor and, you know, men and women did, did different sorts of activities for the sake of the survival of the tribe. And um, there were shamans and hunters and, um, you know, builders and, and, but generally, you know, for most of humanity's history and this hunter-gatherer existence, we, you know, there wasn't uh, a fragmentation of, of um, society to the point that there might be an elite class who could create from, from scratch uh, sort of um, uh, ideology to brainwash the rest of the tribe with. You know, we all sort of shared a single consciousness. In, in these more egalitarian societies, I, I would suggest. There wasn't really a, a felt sense of individuality among each of the members of a tribe. Um, rather, there are what we now call gods, you know, animate spirits of some sort that were in fact the, the guiding uh, powers of, of these tribes. So human beings were, in this sense, you might say possessed by these um, what what today for us in our modern you know deformed societies are difficult to, to perceive it we don't actually perceive them anymore we think that that they were just made up um, you know that sort of fantasies of, of these more primal peoples but in fact I think uh, if you really begin to under, understand how consciousness evolves um, uh, these primordial peoples you know hunter gatherers the people writing on on cave walls uh, dancing around fires beneath the night sky telling the stories of the stars you know with, with songs that they would sing that this eventually evolved or devolved into the alphabet that we use today in our literate societies right so there's there's still a line of continuity here, but you know, I think there's something profoundly uh, ecological and cosmological about the stories that ancient, uh, you know, primordial peoples uh, were enacting, and that, that they weren't just making these stories up. They weren't just uh, arbitrary fabrications. Um, So it's more that, rather than saying as Anna Kantavad does about how it seems to work nowadays where uh, myth or re religion is kind of invented, packaged, and then sold to consumers uh, as a kind of brainwashing technique, a technology of social control, um, but rather, you know, originally myth created the human being rather than human being creating myth. Myth is what shaped our our culture and that that the gods and goddesses are in fact the um, powers and potencies of nature risen to uh, consciousness um, in human beings and that whatever uh, human beings are doing when they perform and enact religion they're doing something that's profoundly um, natural profoundly cosmic, in fact, a result of the very process that brought the universe itself forth. Um, so yeah, religion as a natural phenomenon. Uh, but you see, I'm, I'm examining religion as a natural phenomenon as though human consciousness were also a natural phenomenon, not an epi-phenomenon, but no, really fully 
intrinsic to uh, the process of cosmogenesis itself, not a later addition that accidentally emerged, uh, but an essential characteristic of what the universe is and what the universe is doing. So what is religion? Religion is the human being's way of coming into relationship with the universe. Um, and religion is the universe's way of being human, of expressing humanness. Um, sometimes uh, it's helpful to be able to read uh, as well as speak, so uh, if you're interested in what I'm saying, I'll post some, some essays that you might find clarifying um, about my perspective here. So, yeah, that's what some of what religion might be.